How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees. No episode yesterday, but back at it today with some news. Obviously, Oswald Praza going down is a notable point of news you want to discuss. Any replacements for him? The Yankees have been linked to guys like Ahmed Rosario, Kike Hernandez, and you know they've, they've gone to different teams, but now you see the obvious need. They were looking at those as options because they were seeing Peraza trending in the wrong direction. The shoulder injury, now he's out for a prolonged amount of time. Um, I'm certainly a little bit concerned about his long-term future at this point. I think that he may not even be in the equation anymore. His value is tanked. Uh, but the Yankees need support in the infield. With DJ LeMahieu transitioning to the hot corner full-time, he's falling out of that utility spot. So we need someone to replace that. Ryan has a really good idea. We know J.D. Davis was released yesterday. or you know He'll go through waivers, but no one's probably going to claim him. If, if they do, they have to pay, what, $7 million? And you know the Yankees, if they do claim a guy like this, it costs 110% of his salary. So they end up spending um, over $14 million for a utility man which obviously is not ideal. So we're going to talk about a couple of options here, what makes sense for this team. But Ryan, before we dive into the good stuff, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great. And as you mentioned, you know, finances are so important this time of year because teams have spent either up to or in some cases even past their budget. Uh, and if you look at the teams in front of the Yankees, Obviously, those teams are worse. They played worse than the Yankees last year. The way the waiver claim system works is it's no longer AL and NL. It's just the worst team straight up, 1 through 30. Uh, so if you're, let's say, the Chicago White Sox, the Oakland Athletics, you'll get a pick before the Yankees in terms of having a chance to claim a player who's on waivers. And they might go, well, the Oakland Athletics might need J.D. Davis way more than the Yankees would. But the Oakland Athletics are not spending $7 million. They're cheap. That's why they're bad, right? Like Chicago White Sox. They're not going to spend $7 million they don't have to spend because they're bad. And why would you spend more money to be marginally better and not make the playoffs? So in this case, the Yankees might have a really good chance at at least getting to J.D. Davis in the, in the waiver wire because most of the teams in front of them are either really bad or really cheap or a combination of both. Like, for example, could the Cleveland Guardians really benefit from having J.D. Davis? Probably, I mean, they could benefit from having a DH, but they're hilariously cheap, and even if it does take them to that next level of maybe being a wild card team or a fringe division contender, it's not worth the $7 million to, their, to, to them, to their ownership, so that has to be factored into this too, but don't think the Yankees are, are uh, different from that financial crunch. As you mentioned, it's a 110% tax. So that would mean the Yankees would have to add $14.49 million to their payroll if they were to add J.D. Davis and just straight up claim him. Uh, and I don't think that's happening. I don't think the Yankees would take on J.D. Davis at $6.9 million. Uh, that's just, it just doesn't make sense. Like, I... I would not understand why the Yankees would go past a, what seemed to be a very strict budget after signing Stroman and exceeding that $300 million threshold just to get J.D. Davis, right? There feels like there were other players they could have been on the mix on. Maybe it was a guy like Jordan Hicks who cost roughly around that much money per year um, and would have come and, and honestly would have been a bigger upgrade potentially to your bullpen. Um, I just don't really think the Yankees are going to go that far. But with the waiver claims, you can go out and work out a trade. And I think the Yankees and the Giants would actually make a little bit of sense for a trade here um you know the Yankees not that they have a surplus of pitching depth obviously the pitching depth is going to be a question especially in the rotation but they kind of have a surplus of like triple a arms that are clearly not going to be starters the major league level or should not be relied upon to be starters the major league level um but could be like long relief guys I look at Yoenji's Gomez and say like of that pool of like Luis Heal Clayton Beater and Yoenji's Gomez Heal has the most upside Beater's probably the one that has the most starting potential like in just terms of the guy who has, is the most built up to start. And Gomez, he's very injury prone. Like, he has good stuff. I like him. Like, don't get me wrong. I think he's a good pitcher. Uh, but he's more of a reliever. And the Giants are weird. They don't really like throwing out traditional starters. They'll go and, you know, they'll throw a, a bullpen game. And Gomez kind of fits that bill pretty well because he could give you probably two to three innings. He didn't complete a single start with five innings uh, of five or more innings last year with the Somerset Patriots. And obviously, he came out of the bullpen for his one outing with the Yankees and only pitched two innings. So he's not built up the same way the other guys are. And uh, I, I think that he could probably fit the Giants well. You could probably get the Giants to eat a good chunk of that salary and I think Davis kind of makes sense from an offensive standpoint because he hits right-handed pitching better than left-handed pitching which is surprising because he's a right-handed hitter and he's a big hulking slugger but he doesn't like necessarily have massive home run totals I, I think that the Yankees would be a good ball would have a good ballpark for him if you look at that right field that short porch according to Statcasts, he would have hit 41 home runs over the last three years instead of 35 uh, I know that six home runs doesn't sound like a lot over three years but that's a pretty significant boost to your offensive production most notably 
notably last year, like two home runs does go a long way. It does improve your offensive profile. And San Francisco is certainly not a ballpark to hit home runs at. There hasn't been a hitter to hit 30 home runs as a San Francisco Giant in a single season since 2004 when Barry Bonds did it. Alex, I was born in 2004. So I, I was born right after the end of that season. I have not lived to see a regular season where a San Francisco Giant has hit 30 home runs. And I'm about to turn 20 uh, in the next few months, in the upcoming months. So I mean, it's it's a bad ballpark to hit home runs. I think Yankee Stadium might fit him a little bit better, but there still are questions. Like, I don't think Davis is like a, if the Yankees get up to him in the waiver claim and don't claim him, I would be fuming, but I would at least think that they're at least considering it. And if they could work out a trade with the Giants, maybe that would make sense. But also from the Giants perspective, they probably waived him because they just want to get rid of the money. So maybe they don't want to pay that money. Maybe they're just like, eh, screw it. Somebody's going to pick him at $6.9 million. Um, I wonder where that ends up going, uh, kind of where that ends up shaking down or, or how the Yankees kind of factor into that equation or just where he ends up. But Davis certainly is an interesting option. He can play third. He can play first. If you look at the two positions where you're like, eh, who's going to get hurt? It's probably LeMahieu and Rizzo. It's def I'm not saying it's definitely not Volpe and Glaber, but they're the least likely. Like, those are the most durable guys. They're the youngest guys. Like You expect them to play more than Rizzo and LeMahieu. Davis gives you insurance at those two positions, and I think that's really important. Is he a great defender? No. Uh, he's kind of a brick with the glove, uh, but he can hit, and that's kind of like, I, you just can't, you can't have too many good players, and or, or, you can't have too many good hitters, and he's a good hitter, and I'm willing to stand on that. Yeah, I mean, look, if you can get some offensive support, like, that's kind of the trade-off. If you can get, like, the value defensively that's, like, just good enough... I mean, if you're looking at Peraza specifically, I'd probably rather the guy that can hit than the guy that has gold glove upside because realistically, he's not going to get that much playing time. When he is getting playing time, you want it to be offensively um, stout and, you know, getting on base, leveraging some of your big bats. The probability of him create, causing an error is much lower than, you know, let's say you have four at-bats a game. Um, the probability of you making an impact in those at-bats is far higher than the probability of you having an, making an error. So, like, you theoretically want better offensive players um, based on that logic, at least. J.D. Davis, you know, is, is fine. You know, it's not he's not like a game-breaker. He's 30 years old. Of course, he has some decent moments this spring. He's been fantastic. Uh, I think he's actually 31 now, but, you know, decent, okay batting average, you know, has been above average um, in, terms of, in terms of WRC+, plus. has some power to his bat. Um, and I think, you know, if you're the Yankees, you're thinking to yourself, you can't walk away from the situation right now without an additional veteran, right? Like, the alternatives here, let's talk about if they were to go with the youth um, kind of avenue as a supplement to Peraza and not go for a veteran who may cost them a little bit of money. At this point in time, I kind of feel like J.D. Davis might be a pipe dream because of the money. If they were to strike a deal with uh, the Giants, they'd probably have to offload some salary or the Giants would have to take on some salary. But again, like you said, someone's going to pick them up and the Yankees are simply not doing it. They would most likely if they had the available salary space or the available you know, money below that third luxury tax threshold. But, you know. What younger options do you think could be an, uh, could be an alternative? Like, is Yorbit Vivas someone that you could look at and say, you know what? Like, he showed us enough offensively. Defensively at second base, he's been good. He has experience at third base. Um, is that something you would consider? Like, just going young, cheaper. Is Yorbit Vivas someone you say, like, let's call him up now. Let just, you know, trial by fire. See if he can win the job. Worst case, maybe you trade for somebody if he doesn't uh, kind of step up to the plate. Is that something you're willing to test because of the financial limitations the Yankees have at this moment? Yeah, so I mean, it's an interesting question, right? Because it's like, okay, do you really want to, like, we also have to factor in the deadline here. The Yankees are, if they're good, which again, like, I, we're assuming the Yankees are going to compete this year because they traded for Juan Soto. And I think that's a fair assumption to make. The Yankees, even, and even if they had like a mediocre first half, they'll probably just do what they did in 2021, which is just say, screw it. Just throw as many prospects into the fire as possible. Trade for as many guys. Try to figure it out because it would be a disaster if they missed the playoffs. Um, you know, I, I look at Jorbit Vivas and I say, he's just so important, I think, to their future that they need to let him play in AAA. They need to let him get those reps down there. They need to let him get consistent at bats, have success in AAA, figure some things out. And then if it works, if he has a good year, then you can consider, all right, can he play some third? Can he play some second? Can he help us out a little bit? Like, then you start kind of thinking and, and, and kind of getting the gears kicking there. I don't want to, like, it's tough because I'm sitting here talking about the future of the team, but we understand that this is a very big year. The Yankees are going all in, right? So it's hard for me to sit here and talk about the future of the team. And, and you know, I, I know that it's easy to be dismissive and say, he's a rookie, who cares? This is a stupid conversation. But no, like, anytime we're talking about the future versus the present, right, we have to understand all right, is it, are you getting enough value from Vivas right now 
or would you get enough value from VBUS right now that you kind of have to be willing to risk a little bit of that future value to win games now and, and put yourself in position to win the World Series? Or could you find somebody, I don't know, like Jemai Jones is interesting because he's on the 40-man roster, they claimed him. Is he necessarily a guy you're just like, hand over fist, take the job, we need you to be on this team? Not necessarily. Um, like, I'm not gung-ho about him being the first guy you have. Now, if he's optioned to AAA, let's say, like the Yankees don't actually have to DFA him in order to make room for like two relievers because they're going to have to make room for two relievers or maybe they'll like have Poteet come up. I don't know, but they could just place Peraz on the 60-day on the, uh, IL. They could just move Ben Wortvet to, uh, you know, either on waivers or trade him. Um, they could very, mel- very well keep Jemai Jones in the organization on the 40-man roster, option to AAA, have him, and Vivas' infield depth, and that's what I would prefer. I think the Yankees need a line of defense before they go into those unproven prospects. So I think, you know, even if they sign a guy like, man, I mean, look, he's probably cooked. Like, Gene Segura probably stinks now. I know he was awful last year. But would I take a minor league deal for Gene Segura and, and throw him on your bench and kind of pray that he can revert back to his 2022 or 2021 numbers? I would do that before I go to the prospects because you can just cut him. You can just get rid of him and it doesn't matter if his confidence, like this is, oh, this is very heartless to say, but it kind of doesn't matter if his confidence is crushed. I'm not saying that from like a human perspective. Obviously it would hurt me to know a guy's confidence is crushed. We all understand the, the ups and downs of life and all and work and all that stuff. Uh, but from the Yankees business perspective, the confidence and future success of Jordan Divas is far more important than the confidence and future success of like a minor league free agent. That's just reality. That's the unfortunate way the business works. I would do that before I go to Vivas or Jones. So people could say, why would you want to wash veteran? Again, it's not about me saying, I think Segura is leaps and bounds better than Jorbit Vivas. It's just saying, it kind of buys you a little bit of time. You've got, let's say, a month that you can justifiably, if Gene Segura was just downright awful, justifiably play him on your bench. Hopefully you're not playing him every day. Hit him ninth every now and then and say, he's awful. Okay, but you know we tried it for a month cut him, and if Ivas is tearing it up, or if Jones is tearing it up, then they'll come up. I mean, last year when Jake Bowers was cooking it in AAA, the second guys got hurt, we were pounding the table, like, gotta call up Jake Bowers. Like, I, I, and I'm not saying that to say that we were stupid for doing it, or that anybody was stupid for advocating for the Yankees to call up guys who were playing well in AAA. That's what you should do when guys get hurt. You should go to AAA and say, we can't really sign anybody right now. There's nobody out there that's gonna help us. We're not gonna, you know, hit our heads against the wall and run a short roster. You've got to go to your hot guys in AAA. Uh, you know, I, I think that Vivas and Jones, you should, they should be in that position of if they're, if they're hitting well, if they're playing well and you have an injury or a guy's a guy that you brought for your bench is not working. Hell, I mean, I even acknowledge the reality that like, you'd sign Donovan Solano and he could just have father time hit him. Josh Allison was a pretty good third baseman in 2021 and then stunk out of nowhere in 2022, right? That's just age. I, I acknowledge that reality for him, for Donald, for, for LeMahieu, for Solano, hell, for even Davis. Davis had a 104 WRC+. Plus. Could he very much just have an awful April, lose all his confidence and get cut? Absolutely. You know what I mean? But end of the day, Alex, I just think the Yankees need to find somebody. It doesn't have to be Davis or Solano. I would love it to be one of the two, preferably Solano because of the versatility. Um, But man, just give me somebody, somebody that bridges the gap and keeps your minor league guys at the minor league level, because I don't want to be in a situation where I'm running out quad, like five or six guys, either on my bench or lineup that are not major league players or quad A players. I mean, there were points in time in the season last year, you had Cordero, Bowers, McKinney, I mean, kind of falafel, look, he's a major league player, but not a major league hitter. He's just not that good. Cabrera was just not it. Peraza would be on the roster sometimes. Like, Donaldson, like, that's not, that's not competitive. And Stanton was having a down year. Then Rizzo gets concussed. I mean, that's not a, comp- Volpe for the, f- like, first two months. Look, he was a good defender down the stretch and, and he hit better. But man, those first two months, he was awful. He was a bad defender and a bad hitter. He was not a major league caliber player for the first two months. For like April and May, you had like, Five, six, sometimes even seven. Willie Calhoun, I mean, I even forgot about him. Maybe even eight players on your bench and lineup that were not major league caliber. That can't happen again. You cannot have that happen again. You have Juan Soto guaranteed for one year. One year. You don't know what's going to happen in free agency. I hope he comes back. I anticipate he'll come back, but that's not a guarantee. You have him for one guaranteed season. You've got to find somebody. You got to find somebody. I. I'm not saying you got to blow through the luxury tax. You don't have to pick up Davis. You don't have to spend the bank on Solano. Pick up somebody. I don't care. It could be a washed up Gene Segura. It could be just somebody. Give me somebody. 
Yeah, I think I think you're spot on. Like, you know, we love the fact that the Yankees are developing some of these young players, but the truth is, at the end of the day, you need some experienced talent every now and then, especially if it's just a utility role. It maybe it's not the time to be testing your luck with Yorbit Vivas, who's a little bit underdeveloped still. Maybe it's the better opportunity to go out and find a veteran who they've been looking into. So I think we're obviously on to that. Um, they have been looking for guys. Obviously, Rosario and Hernandez, um, you know, stand out the most. But they're going to keep going. Like, J.D. Davis, Solano, like, these guys are very good options. It really just comes down to money and how much they're willing to spend. So we'll see how they kind of progress over the next couple of weeks. Obviously, I think we have, what, 18 days before the regular season starts on the 28th. So we have plenty of time before then to go out and find somebody. If not, you know, the Yankees may go into the regular season and wait and just be cautious and patient and, you know, make the move if necessary. We'll see how they operate. But... As always, my friends, always happy to hear your thoughts below in the YouTube comments. Make sure to like and subscribe as always, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.